when you think of electricity, you think of Edison. When you think of radio, you think of Marconi. But there is one electrical genius who is nearly forgotten. A man who dreamed of giving the world an unlimited supply of energy. His name was Nikola Tesla. And he was the master of lightning. This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. The progressive development of man is vitally dependent on invention. Its ultimate purpose is the complete mastery of mind over the material world, the harnessing of the forces of nature to human needs. Nikola Tesla, 1919. This is the story of a modern Prometheus who changed the world with electricity. It was Nikola Tesla who captured the power of Niagara Falls with his alternating current system and made it possible to transmit electricity to all of America and the world. It was Tesla who patented the technology for wireless communications that is used in all radio and television broadcasting. His incredible legacy can be seen in everything from remote control to neon and fluorescent lighting, x-rays, guided missiles, and even the Strategic Defense Initiative. Yet somehow, history has overlooked this remarkable man. Tesla was indeed a genius of the first magnitude. He was a, a technological visionary. He, can, he could envision great things and make them work. He was a foreigner an immigrant who arrived in America with only his dreams. A proud and sometimes arrogant man, he worked and locked horns with some of the most powerful people of his day. Thomas Edison, who resented his ideas. Guglielmo Marconi, who capitalized on his inventions. George Westinghouse, who created the Westinghouse Electric Company with Tesla's patents. And the great financier, J. Pierpont Morgan, who supported and then abandoned him. At the height of his career, Tesla was one of the most famous men in the world. His inventions helped America grow into a powerful industrial nation. His ideas created billion-dollar corporations. But Tesla was not a practical man. Always driven toward the next great breakthrough, he failed to protect his commercial interests. In the end, others made fortunes with his inventions, and he wound up penniless and rejected. Money does not mean to me what it does to other men. All my money has been invested in inventions to make man's life a little easier. He was a visionary genius. There aren't many of them. And he was willing to give his life to his visions. We have to evolve means for obtaining energy from stores which are forever inexhaustible. What I intend to show you now, step by step, is how I finally reached my dream. This is the house in which, by coincidence bizarre, I was born on the stroke of midnight between July 9 and 10, 1856. A fierce electrical storm raged that night. Nikola Tesla was born of Serbian parents on the eastern edge of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, 
in what is today Croatia. His father, Milutin, was an Orthodox priest who expected his son to follow him in the clergy. There were only two choices for children in those days, one being to go in the army and the other being to uh, become a priest. Tesla was not attracted by either of them, which was very distressing to his father. My father was a very erudite man. The training he gave me comprised of guessing one another's thoughts and repeating long passages of verse. My mother descended from one of the oldest Serbian families in the country. She invented and constructed all kinds of tools and devices and wove the finest designs from thread. Her fingers were nimble enough to tie three knots in an eyelash. Early on, Tesla began to demonstrate an extraordinary imagination. In my boyhood, I suffered from a peculiar affliction due to the appearance of images, often accompanied by strong flashes of light. I was quite unable to distinguish whether what I saw was tangible or not. To give an example, I was fascinated by a description of Niagara, and I pictured in my imagination a big wheel run by the falls. I told my uncle that one day I would go to America and carry out this scheme. Then, at the age of 17, while preparing for the seminary, Tesla contracted cholera and the brush with death changed his life forever. In one of the spells which was thought to be my last, my father rushed into the room. Perhaps I said, I make it well if you will let me study engineering. You will go to the best technical institution in the world, he solemnly said. I came to life like another Lazarus, to the utter amazement of everyone. In 1877, at the age of 21, I traveled to Graz, Austria to begin my college education. Here, I quickly became obsessed with the science of electricity. I wanted to know more of this wonderful force. Every spark produced a thousand echoes in my brain. In 1831 in England, Michael Faraday had discovered the principle of electromagnetic induction, which made it possible to generate electricity. Faraday discovered that if you have an electric circuit in a changing magnetic field, it would induce an electric current to run in, in the wire. So this was the invention of the method of inducing, of creating oscillating or AC electric currents. Uh, and it was that invention that Tesla later harnessed into the electrical system that drives our, our uh, civilization. Early electric motors operated on direct current electricity but required a system of sparking connections to induce a rotary effect in the machine. I remarked to my professor that the design of generators and motors could be greatly improved by using currents that alternated. He embarrassed me greatly in front of my classmates, saying, Mr. Tesla will never accomplish this. It is a perpetual motion scheme. Meanwhile, in America, Thomas Alva Edison had begun to experiment with vacuum tubes, producing the first commercial incandescent light bulb in 1878. Edison and Tesla would soon cross paths in a gargantuan technological struggle between direct and alternating current electricity. In 1880, Tesla moved to Budapest where he found employment with the Central Telegraph Office. Here, his idea for an AC motor began to haunt him. In my room, I could hear the ticking of a watch with three rooms between me and the timepiece. A carriage passing at a distance of a few miles fairly shook my whole body. 
The whistle of a distant locomotive vibrated so strongly in my ears that the pain was unbearable. To recover from these attacks, I took long walks in the city park. One afternoon, which is ever present in my recollection, the sun was just setting and reminded me of Goethe's glorious passage. The glow retreats. Done is the day of toil. Upon its track to follow, follow soaring. As I uttered these inspiring words, the idea came to me like a lightning flash. I fell to my knees and drew a diagram in the ground. Tesla perceived a whirling field of energy. He suddenly knew he could recreate this rotating field by powering the coils of a motor in different steps or phases, like the pistons of an engine. The resulting forces of magnetic attraction and repulsion would literally twist the rotor in a circle, the electrical equivalent of the wheel. And all this was accomplished with alternating currents. It would soon turn the wheels of industry around the world. The strength of Tesla's mind was almost certainly in this sense of visualization, uh, be able to, to see things move in front of him. You see, it was not a perpetual motion scheme. It had been the height of my ambition and my most ardent wish to see America and come in contact with the great Thomas Edison. Accordingly, I undertook the voyage and after losing my money and tickets and passing through a series of mishaps, including a mutiny in which I almost lost my life, I landed on these blessed shores with four cents in my pocket. Tesla arrived in New York on June 6, 1884. A 28-year-old immigrant, he was filled with dreams of success in this strange new land. In his pocket, he carried a letter of recommendation from Charles Batchelor, one of Edison's associates in Europe. My dear Edison, I know two great men, and you are one of them. The other is this young man. Tesla came to America because he had tried to get his alternating current motor produced in Germany, and I believe in France as well, uh, without any success. And he realized that there was probably only one person in the world who could uh, help him with it, and that was Thomas Edison. New York had had electricity since the late 1870s. Edison installed his first DC power station on Pearl Street, near the financial district, in 1882. He did this with help from the great Wall Street financier, J. Pierpont Morgan. But the system was far from perfect. Electricity was a very new thing. Most people didn't understand what it was all about. They were very afraid of it. There were fires breaking out. The horses on the streets would get shocks through their shoes and run away. So it was a very exciting time for Edison. I was thrilled to the marrow meeting Edison. This great man had revolutionized the world with his incandescent lamp. And I was burning to show him my motor that ran on alternating currents. Edison had built his business on the direct current system, and any talk of alternating currents was an aggravation to him. The problem with direct current is that you can't change the voltage. What you generate, that's, that's what you get. And if you generated the power at too high a voltage, you would blow out lamps at the other end. If you generated the proper power for the lamps and you want to go any great distance, then you need copper wire that's as thick as your arm. And the Edison people said, well, that's all right. We'll just have a...